Emma from Cambridge Assessment and today I'm going to be talking to you about the results of some research that I conducted with my colleague Stuart Shaw about using ePortfolios to capture and assess transversal skills, tensions in theory and praxis. Many students today live in a multimedia, hypertextual and digitalized world, but often the assessment and learning methods they experience can be somewhat of an anachronism that can be out of step with their technological lives. Therefore, proponents of ePortfolios call for the use of technological methods to transform teaching, learning and assessment. Beyond this, assessment methods are more geared toward assessing products rather than processes like reflection and collaboration, and ePortfolios have been put forward as potential tools to assess these processes. These are seen to be important skills in today's knowledge economy, and the value of promoting lifelong learning is more important than ever. However, there are major barriers, including the fact that not all students have the same access to technology. Several different definitions of ePortfolios exist, but they generally refer to purposeful collections of information and digital artifacts that demonstrate development or evidence learning outcomes, skills or competencies. They are increasingly used in innovative ways, particularly within higher education. Our research sought to explore what can we learn from existing research in this area? What are the opportunities and challenges for ePortfolios in HE and secondary school, including for capturing and assessing transversal skills? What are the challenges of implementation and what recommendations can we make to facilitate successful implementation? We conducted a comprehensive review on the literature of ePortfolio theory and praxis. Keywords were entered into the University of Cambridge's online search platform, and this resulted in approximately 95 articles being evaluated that were published between 2000 and 2019, written in English and conducted largely in Europe. We found that the majority of research was in the AE sector, and there was a distinct paucity of research in secondary school settings. An important contribution of our review is the identification of several tensions in ePortfolio theory and praxis, which we believe have not been explicitly expressed elsewhere in this manner. The tensions were grouped into three broad themes, the theory and research underpinning ePortfolios, and this theme is really about the fact that while there are strongly developed theoretical arguments behind the use of ePortfolios as a pedagogical tool and to measure transversal skills, there's unfortunately a lack of empirical research linking them to their intended outcomes, which constitutes a gap in the literature. The next theme is about the uses and purposes of ePortfolios, which consisted of several sub-themes. The third theme was about the challenges and opportunities related to implementing ePortfolios, and this also consisted of several sub-themes. The first group of tensions that I'd like to discuss are the uses and purposes of ePortfolios. The key tensions in this theme were tree ePortfolios versus digital submission, and this includes discussion of the transversal skills of reflection and collaboration. Then there's control versus autonomous individualized learning and summative versus formative assessment. And beyond this, we also found that ePortfolios can potentially support teaching and learning in various other ways beyond assessment. Are ePortfolios simply a place to store work online, or are they something beyond that, something conceptually separate? Are we assessing and capturing the products of learning or the process, which is how the product was developed or how students' understanding developed? How we conceptualize ePortfolios influences the constructs that they're able to assess and capture. This table compares the differences between products and process ePortfolios. Product ePortfolios are also known as assessment ePortfolios. They consist of the finished products and therefore they have limited uses of the assessment on, of these final products. And these can be found in secondary schools. Process ePortfolios are also known as learning ePortfolios or true ePortfolios. As well as consisting of final drafts, they also include drafts or unpolished work, which can capture the process of compiling the ePortfolio. Therefore, they can have broader uses. For example, looking at the process that produced the artifacts, the story of the student's learning journey, their, ref their reflections on their learning strategies, or how their work developed over time. Some examples of this being used can be found in HE. When turning to the transversal skill of reflection, it's very commonly included or assessed in ePortfolios, 
and there's a large body of literature about it. In essence, the artifacts uploaded or created in the ePortfolio can be reflected upon, and this reflection can be on the product themselves, for example, at the end of the process, reflecting on the strengths and weaknesses of the produced work, or it can be on the re reflection on the process that produced the products. In this case, reflection could be done at multiple points in time during the learning process. This latter type of reflection on the process is arguably a deeper kind of reflection that promotes more continual engagement of students throughout the course. It can capture various concepts, such as the depth of their engagement, their self-awareness and their awareness of the learning process. And this can be argued to afford the potential for a more complete assessment of student learning and personal growth and can encourage lifelong learning. This kind of ePortfolio works best over a period of time in which the student grew and developed during producing this work, and it supports reflection analogous to the metaphor of the learning journey. There are some challenges, however, with including reflection in assessment, such as construct irrelevant variants and the potential for negative washback. Turning to collaboration, there was less literature about ePortfolios being used to assess collaboration, but sound theoretical arguments for how they could support it. Because ePortfolios can be shared or collaborative, meaning that multiple students can work together on a shared outcome, this can support aspects like negotiation, sharing resources and conflict resolution, and they can offer opportunities for both synchronous or asynchronous interaction. Another tension regarding the uses and purposes of ePortfolios is about control versus autonomy. How much control should the teacher or assessor exert over the nature and contents of the ePortfolio? Or in contrast, how much autonomy should students be given in the construction process? This can include questions of word or artifact limits, multimedia or software being constrained or specified, and whether the nature of the artifacts are also constrained or specified in detail. There are benefits and drawbacks to each choice, and it depends on the intended purposes of the ePortfolio. If we have greater autonomy for students, this allows intrinsic motivation, individualized learning and greater engagement. But if we have greater control, this leads to greater uniformity of the assessment and more manageable and consistent marking. The next tension is between summative and formative assessment in ePortfolios. They can be used for both, but they will look different depending on what they're used for. When they're used for summative assessment, they are usually compiled at the end of a learning process. They have very prescribed tasks with exemplars and detailed rubrics or mark schemes to score the outcomes, and students will carefully monitor what they contribute. Whereas a formative ePortfolio would be maintained regularly throughout the process. It would include less constrained tasks possibly, and students might be more comfortable to share their true reflections. In both cases, ample technological support is required. Turning now to the implementation of ePortfolios, key tensions include conceptual versus technological change, teacher versus student ICT skills, engagement versus perceived burden, and pedagogy versus technology. Conceptual versus technological change highlights that when we introduce change into educational settings, this requires understanding ePortfolios at a pedagogical level, but also requires having the right technological infrastructure to support it, which will vary with different contexts. There's also a potential gap between the ICT skills of students and their teachers, which has implications for providing support and feedback. There are issues such as students with better technological abilities are being perceived to perform better in their ePortfolios. Student engagement is important for the success of ePortfolios and can influence their validity. If students perceive it as an extra task to do rather than appreciating its value in the learning process, this could lead to superficial types of engagement. Another tension was between pedagogy and technology, and this reminds us that technology really expands our educational possibilities, but pedagogy should always come first. Once you have a strong pedagogical rationale for an ePortfolio, then you can select the right technology and implement it. This will lead to focused and coherent ePortfolios rather than mere yeah, odds and ends in a repository. This table, adapted from Lorenzo and Itelson, shows different possible technological approaches and some examples of the advantages and disadvantages of each. For example, homegrown, open source, commercial, or common tools. 
And this table, adapted from several sources, provides different factors to take into consideration when choosing an approach to ePortfolio software. For example, you would need to consider the user experience, financial costs, and the system access and security, amongst others. In conclusion, several tensions in ePortfolio theory and praxis emerged under three themes, and these can guide decision-making, design, and implementation of ePortfolios. There was limited research, especially at school level. Most of the research was on HE, and it was often methodologically limited in the sense that it was based on case studies and perception studies. However, the literature, literature does indicate that ePortfolios have the potential for capturing and assessing transversal skills, definitely assessing reflection, and to a lesser extent, collaboration. ePortfolios provide an opportunity to make the role of reflection in learning explicit, and they can support collaboration by creating opportunities for students to share, discuss, and work together on outcomes. Process-oriented ePortfolios have the potential to capture constructs akin to the student's learning journey. Key conclusions in terms of implementation is that ePortfolios should be embedded in the design phase and take note of the contextual factors which will influence the extent of change and support required. Guidelines were given for selecting an approach to ePortfolio software and high quality technological support is required. Lastly, student engagement is crucial for successful ePortfolio implementation. And that brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for listening, and I welcome any comments and discussion points. Please contact me if you would like to discuss this work further. Thank you.